It's officially leaf peeping season in New England and the foliage is looking absolutely beautiful. I'm so lucky to have this view in my backyard. So I thought it'd be the perfect opportunity to do the October garden tour. So let's go ahead and take a look at how the garden still looks right now in the third week of October. We'll start the October garden tour in the backyard today. And this bed is still looking really beautiful with this Japanese maple. While most of the perennials are just about past their prime, some of the shrubs in this bed are still looking really nice. This Maimone purple effect, I absolutely love this Wygela. This is a dwarf Wygela and it's new to me. This is only its second year in my garden and it has the most beautiful variegated foliage and hasn't dropped its leaves yet. So it's still looking beautiful in October. I have a sunflower, that's that stalk you see here, that I had sowed as an experiment in the first week of August and it was just getting ready to bloom and a deer came by and ate it. So I, I even had deer in my garden this morning. <laughs> they are always around but if I fall behind on my spraying, they, they know it. The allium is now done. I did leave the seed heads up because I thought they looked really pretty and had sort of a fall vibe to them. Right behind my um, lemon jade sedum, rock and grow lemon jade sedum is flopped and um, it needs to be moved. It doesn't get enough sun behind the allium and under the maple. I still have some blooms on my cat's pajamas nepeta here in the front and my acorus is still looking beautiful and this um, is it's not really a grass but it is grass like it's called um, sweet flag ogon acorus sweet flag ogon and it's a variegated sweet flag and it keeps this color all year round so it is um, evergreen. It does get a little bit duller, like more like a pale yellow um, through the winter months, but then it gets really bright during the spring, summer, and fall. But it certainly thrives in cooler weather because in the spring and in the fall is when it puts on most of its growth. And right behind, I have some wee white hydrangeas and those really struggled this year. Um, between the really hot weather that pretty much crisped them up as soon as the blooms appeared. Then I cut them back and then we got a bunch of rain so far this fall. Between the drought all summer and the consistent rain so far this fall, it's been an all or nothing growing season and they just didn't do well. So hopefully these wee white hydrangeas do better next year. I cut back my Munstead Lavender um, probably sometime in August and it has flushed back out maybe sooner than that maybe mid to late July and it sent up some more blooms. That one might be the one that gets the most sun because the other two did flush out with new foliage but they don't have um, any blooms. Here's a beautiful perennial that I think everyone should have in their garden. It's scabiosa or pincushion flower. And this one is called butterfly blue. It is such a beautiful, delicate, light lavender flower. And it blooms nonstop from spring through your first frost. This plant has not stopped blooming. And this is what it looks like when the bloom is spent and these are the new buds that are getting ready to open up. So there's still a few blooms on here and more to come um, unless we get a frost you know any day now which is possible we do to get our first frost towards the end of October but this is one that you should definitely think about having in your garden if you want a really long blooming perennial. 
my Stokes Aster has sent out a couple of sporadic blooms. And it's always such a nice surprise when you're going through your garden beds and you see a bloom that you know should have been done a long time ago, but they always put out these last couple of surprises and it's so fun. My Apricot Delight, Tutti Frutti Apricot Delight Yarrow still has some blooms on them. They're a little faded now, so they're looking like this light peachy color, but still it lasted throughout the summer and into the fall. Of course, they do take a break. Uh, after they have their first initial flush, if you cut them back, they will occasionally send up these secondary blooms, but it's good to know that there is that possibility that they will bloom again. And here is another one of the pincushion flower and leaves because it's fall. There is some more of the Tutti Frutti Apricot Delight Yarrow in bloom and these um, Queen Lime Red Zinnias are still going. I mean, the shrub has definitely seen better days. It's starting to get spotted and tired. but at least there is still some color to look at. Look at this, a green twister echinacea hiding between all of the zinnias. Even my fig tree that is about three years old and has never given me figs has really pretty fall color. These evergreens that I have here, a dwarf Hanoki cypress and a fern spray gold cypress, as well as my Cyboldi sedum is offering really beautiful color in these containers in the fall season. Evergreens are invaluable in a garden because when everything else is done blooming, they're still giving you so much interest. This sedum is absolutely beautiful. It's called Cyboldi and I'll flash the name up on the screen. And it has this most beautiful color right now that it's fall. It almost looks like a rainbow. And these little blooms at the end of the stem really beautiful. I initially fell in love with this sedum because it has a really pretty blue color and it looks very similar to eucalyptus when it first leaves out in the spring. And I still have some beautiful cosmos blooming in my containers on my back patio. This variety is called Little Princess and it still has a bunch of buds. Here in my left side shed bed, the Hardy Hibiscus, this one here is the Perfect Storm by Proven Winners. The foliage is dark, so it transitions so well into fall. And in the back there, I have my uh, Quickfire Hydrangea. And there's also some anemones that are in bloom. My Zephyrine Druin rose that I planted earlier this spring has almost made its way up the whole trellis. I have been training it. I read up on how to train your climbing roses and you're supposed to go in a kind of crossway pattern or like, you know, side to side. So I've been working on that and I guess you have to catch them when the canes are still pliable so that you can bend them and they won't break. 
But here is my um, quick fire hydrangea. Had really beautiful color until a couple of weeks ago where it was still that really pretty red. And now it's taking on that very dark mauve color. Almost looking tan. And then here I have some Angelina sedum that I have kind of let grow itself in my beds as a ground cover. I have some there and some back there. And I really like the way it looks, so I leave it. It gets really bright yellow in the summer and it gets more green when the weather cools off. I had cut back all my astilbe because it was really crispy from the um, drought in the summer but now it has flushed out with new green growth. My Autumn Joy sedum back here has been absolutely decimated by deer. They hadn't touched them in prior years, but for some reason, they really, really liked them this year. And they make quite a mess. Look at this. They just leave them all over the place. They have no manners, clearly. Look at this. They even ate Verbena bonariensis. I had these in the containers here, and while the Cosmos in these containers didn't do quite as well, once I pulled them out, the Verbena really took off. My Mandevilla is still blooming. And it looks like it wants to start vining and climbing up my window. Look at this. Too bad it won't get a chance to show off before the frost hits us. Here's some more Verbena. And they took a couple of bites out of this one too. But look at these little lime hydrangeas. Is that color not gorgeous? I love these so much. This first shrub here has taken quite a beating from all of the rain we've gotten in the last few weeks but the other two are still looking really beautiful. This Helen von Stein lamb's ear has quickly become a new favorite perennial of mine. It doesn't bloom and it just looks gorgeous. Look at the contrast of the blue foliage with these hydrangeas. Now I will have to move these because um, like I expected when I planted them, the little limes would very quickly fill out this border but I do have a plan for them and next spring they will be going to a new spot in the garden. This Japanese maple here is called Dancing Peacock and it had the most beautiful and vibrant red color this fall. It shined brighter than all my other maples in the garden. And I still have it in a pot because it was really small. It was a one gallon when I got it and it was just a little twig. But it's gotten big enough now where it can be planted in the landscape. Here I have some more of that Cyboldi sedum and some Angelina sedum, as well as some hens and chicks. I also bring this bowl in for the winter because it's terracotta and I don't want it to crack. I really love the way this turned out. This indent here, it's from a deer hoof. And I didn't think that they liked Brunnera, but apparently they do. This is my newer shade garden area in the Japanese maple garden that we're working on. And they decimated my guacamole hosta, which I know they do go for hosta, but I didn't expect them to go for the Brunnera. I had a grouping of three here and one of them died off actually. And so now I'm going to have to see if these other two recover and make it through the winter. I'll take a little bit from Peter to pay Paul and I'll just divide a little piece off of each 
and replace the one that didn't make it. My hookara is still looking pretty good. This is the uh, wild berry and it flushed out a good amount of growth and I still have my black pearl hookara under this wastebasket cloche because it was really tiny and um, to allow it some time to recover before something went and ate it. But this area is still a work in progress. We've decided to wait until next spring to gather some more um, flagstone and cobblestone to finish this outline and then we can start working on making the stonework more permanent. I kept these chairs here even though the sun isn't as hot but initially I placed them to protect the hosta underneath but I also have a little honey hydrangea in the middle and I feel like having that obstacle there is helping the deer stay away from this area. The autumn brilliance fern that I divided um, a when I started working on this garden area, so earlier this summer, is putting on a lot of new growth and has such beautiful autumn color with these orange yellow leaves that uh, start turning color. And now from one one gallon container, I have two. My little honey hydrangea has such beautiful chartreuse yellow leaves and it is not done turning for fall. It's supposed to turn a beautiful red and I'm excited to see how the color change progresses on this shrub. It is a dwarf shrub only getting three to four feet tall and wide. And my lamb's ear has gotten ginormous. I had bought three one gallon containers at the Home Depot this year and I now have four because I divided them. But these clumps are so large that even this one here, I can divide into at least four more plants. So I'll be doing some of that next spring and moving them around the garden because this is a really beautiful plant and I'm really enjoying it. You can see here that I've used some tomato cages to cage in my golden, oriental golden spruce. It's a version of Skylands and it's an absolutely beautiful conifer, but it is very slow growing. And I caught some deer taking some bites out of it. There were some very blunt cuts on the branches and so it was evident to me um, with that and the hoof marks and the mulch that they had been around. So I put this um, makeshift cage around it and I will be adding some chicken wire to further protect the tree over the winter. Here I have a Pikachu hydrangea and it's a really beautiful panicle hydrangea. I had picked this up on clearance at Walmart about three to four years ago now. I bought two of them and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, they were about $3.75 a piece, which was a real great deal. And I'm just loving the way that it has such pretty fall color. I only have one shrub left because the other one did die this summer when the lawn care company got too close when they were treating our lawn. The dahlias have finally picked up. They had a slow start to the season with the drought we had, lack of rain, really hot weather, but now that it's cooled off and we've gotten some rain, they're really picking up and looking very beautiful. Here's my uh, purple glam berry bush, beauty bush. It's um, by Proven Winners and it's absolutely gorgeous. It puts on these little clusters of very dainty pinkish white flowers it has this beautiful dark foliage, but the real attraction is now in the fall when it puts on all these beautiful pinkish purple berries. As we come around the corner to the front of the house, my cat's pajamas nepeta up here is also still putting out some blooms. And I've placed that ground cover shrub. It's a golden Pacific juniper to plant in this general area so that I can repeat the pattern of gold as we go down the foundation side of the house. This area is still a work in progress. The border needs to be widened. The evergreens need to grow some. These lilies are going to get moved. They are the Casablanca white lilies and I'm going to place them in the front beds um, this fall, maybe this weekend. 
But the thing that I was hoping would have been doing better by now are my marigolds, the Kalimanjaro white marigolds that I started from seed a bit late. While the marigolds do have lots of buds on them, we are also approaching our last frost date. So I don't know that they'll have enough time to open up before we get a frost. So next year, instead of starting these in mid-June, I would start them somewhere in the first to second week of May. And I have some salvia that is still having some color. And of course, this beautiful candy corn spirea. The fashionably early phlox that we planted a couple of months ago is still putting out some sporadic blooms. And I have a mullein or vivascum that has sent out a new bloom stalk. Here's my Presidente Clematis. Now I had a trellis that was leaned up against this Colorado Bruce Bruce, but it was kind of misshaping the tree, so I removed the trellis. But I have some buds and it's putting on some blooms. I think it's gonna look really pretty climbing up this tree. The front porch has gotten a Halloween makeover. And my purple fountain grasses are still looking great. They're starting to get a little drier now with the cooler temperatures, but they've sent out a lot of beautiful plumes. And they're really such a beautiful container plant for fall. My Asian garden celosia has started to dry up, but the alyssum and the nasturtium is still looking really pretty. The size of this nasturtium. It's absolutely thriving in this cooler weather. I recently picked up some new Autumn Joy sedum Home Depot had started to mark down their perennials for the season, and I bought three of them at $5 a piece. And the reason I wanted this variety of Autumn Joy Sedum is because it has darker foliage. The variety I currently have in my garden has a yellow foliage, and I believe the variety is neon, and it was given to me by a neighbor. And so I recently picked up this more traditional version of the Autumn Joy Sedum and it's absolutely beautiful. This plant is a pollinator magnet. There are bumblebees on here all day long. I was cutting down my Luna White Hibiscus about a month ago, and I noticed that there were some branches that had some buds on them. So I left those few branches standing, and it's blooming, which is amazing. I've actually never seen it bloom this late. And I have two of them, one on either side of the walkway. And this is the only one sending out some blooms. If you've been following my last couple of garden tours where I've showed you my Atomic Purple Gumfrina border, look at this. It is still doing absolutely amazing in the third week of October. This plant is drought tolerant, cool tolerant, and it just loves life right now. It supposedly goes until the first frost. So we are about a week or two away from that, but we never know with the weather, right? So we will see how things go. But I'm absolutely in love with this plant on this border this year. I have some apricot 
straw flowers kind of mixed in here. These plants grow kind of skinny and tall, so I would, if I grow these again, I'm definitely going to grow them a lot denser. I'm going to plant a few really close together so that they can kind of create a little mass and hold each other up. My knockout roses are still looking really beautiful. They have lots of blooms and lots of buds. And they will go until your first frost. Really good, easy rose to have in any garden. And here is my other double play candy corn spirea. Also looking really pretty. And in this bed here, we still have some ageratum that keeps blooming and a couple of sporadic foxglove. And we're back where we started in the backyard with all of the pretty fall foliage. I hope that you've enjoyed spending this time with me checking out the garden in October as the leaves are falling. And I'm going to end this video with showing you a little bit of Halloween fun courtesy of my youngest son. As always, thank you for hanging out and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button and please consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my future videos and we'll see you soon.